In this video trade, we're gonna look at a different approach to trailing stops. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so a good trading buddy of mine was talking about a different way of trailing stops in a trend environment, which I thought was pretty neat. Okay, so to do this, you have got to scale, have an option of scaling. So if you're trading futures and you're in this in the US and you're trading futures and you only happen to have one contract because you're a new trader, this probably isn't gonna be very good for you. If you're spread bet in the UK, this is great. If you're doing more than kind of three pounds a point, maybe less depending on who your broker is, uh, you can do this kind of strategy. All right, let me use the purple pen. So the idea is that you use a standard kind of trail. So the standard kind of trail is this, yeah? We've got an uptrend here. We've got a kind of moving average pushing up. Um, we're long and we're pushing up and we wait for a market to make a pullback. This is kind of pretty standard stuff. And then we wait for it to break out through that high. And then we put our stop under that prior low, but we split it into three orders. This is the kind of twist on it. We had one, two, three different orders. So we split up our position into three different scales. Okay, market pushes on, pulls back again, breaks through the high. This time we cancel two of them and we bring them up to here. So two and three. So you've still got your initial here, but you're kind of ratcheting up a larger portion of position. Then it goes up again, goes to a new high, does the same thing, breaks out from the high. You then ratchet some of the position up or a third of it, should I say, under that low here. So you've got one position. So now you've got a staggered stop under each low. So you've locked in some, but you're still giving room. Because listen, the issue you have, of course, is that if you were to bring all of your stop up, the slightest little kiss under that low, which does happen at the end of, well, not the end of trends, when trends kind of, you know, unwind a bit, you get the aggressive beginning, which is here. And if that's all you're looking to capture, then that's fine. You know, you tighten it, tighten it up until you're out and you're out. But often trends will do this bit of aggressive thing. They'll backfill a bit. They'll sit in a kind of range. They'll, they'll, they'll go a bit quiet and then they'll rip off again. And this is a way of getting on board that while still kind of preventing yourself from being, um, from being kind of caught out. So obviously you can either keep it really, really wide and have your stop down here, but then you do risk this turning into the reversal. So this is a kind of happy medium. You start to ratchet your stop up. So you have three, three tray, three scales, should I say here, then you split it, you have two there, then one there. Now, what happens is, market will kind of do its acceleration, really aggressive move. It will start to unwind a little bit, come down, ping you out on this third of the position. That's fine because you've still made whatever you've made from the long point here. There's your profit, there's your percentage profit. Um, and then hopefully the market will push on and it will drive higher. And if you're being extra aggressive, maybe you'd look to add some and get back on the position. That, that's a different, a different discussion altogether. However, what it does is it means that you've still got the bulk of the position still in. Okay, of course, then if it reverses back, you're not giving it all back. You've locked some in at the highs, you've locked some in here, and you've locked some in there. Obviously not as great as locking it all in there, but that's the price you pay. You've got to kind of weigh up what you're going to do with stops. You've got to give them a little bit of room to catch the trend, not be too tight, but then not too much room that you're giving it all back. This is a kind of nice little happy medium strategy, I think, because very often trends will do this. Aggressive, 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 little shallow pullbacks, ratchet up. Then you'll get a deeper pullback that kind of sucks in a few sellers a few shorts, you know, a few people hitting those bids, a few weak buyers who were a bit late to the party, took the third wave higher, uh, that old thing, and they were buying on here. They're caught out. They got stopped on here, caused a little bit of a flurry. And then, you know, supply demand evens back out again. Then it chugs back up because the underlying current of this is bullish. You're in, you've skimmed a little bit off. You're not too unhappy either because that was a good chunk. You've still got a meat of it. Your average position is down here and you're off that longer term trend and then you can manage that how you see fit. So that's a little good idea. I thought that was a really nice idea, a way of splitting up your trades into three rather than just thinking of it all in or out. All right, guys, take care. Keep the risk managed. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.